What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and we need to build a new computer. We are gonna build ourselves the ultimate 9900K editing rig. So we've teamed up with MSI to show you how to build it. So these are the parts that we've chosen for our 9900K build, and again, a huge thank you to MSI for sponsoring today's video. Now, the, the main part of this, that everything's gonna attach to is our MEG Z390 Godlike. This is their flagship Z390 motherboard. It has all the features we need to unlock all of the features of our 9900K. It's overclockable, expandable, it even has a live streaming capture card that comes with it, as well as an M.2 expansion card that can plug into your PCI Express lanes, giving you a total of five NVMe uh, M.2 drives on this. So that's amazing when it comes to a motherboard. For our graphics card, we've also chosen the MSI RTX 2080 Ti Trio. This is a custom PCB overclocking friendly 2080 Ti that's gonna give our gaming performance as well as our rendering performance a huge boost. Now, as mentioned, we've got our 9900K. We will be overclocking this because, you know, overclocking. You might be asking yourself why we chose a 9900K for an editing rig when there's X299 and much higher core count CPUs out there. Well, that is because of QuickSync. This has something called QuickSync, which means Premiere can actually leverage the internal GPU in this chip, as well as our GPU on top of all the other uh, core, you know, workout that's happening during Premiere to give us a huge edge when it comes to rendering speeds. So we saw a huge improvement with the 9900K in our small form factor build when we enabled hardware encoding and it was a huge boost versus not using it at all, even with having a GPU. So that's why we're using that. Now in terms of power supply, I am using my RM850. This is a Corsair power supply and we're using a custom sleeved cable set for that to make it look good, obviously. I mean, this is a little bit of an extreme build. We want it to look as good as possible because it's a showpiece as well as a, a regular desktop PC. Now we've got here some very special edition Corsair RAM. This is the Dominator Platinum. It's actually the black and orange with the burnt tops, but I switched the silver tops back on this, making this more of a one-on-one -on -one custom one-off. There's a lot of ones in there. RAM for this build, because we are using our Be Quiet Silent Base 801 case, which is also black and orange. So this is gonna tie in a bit of a theme there. Uh, speaking of case, obviously, like I said, we're using the Silent Base 801. It's a full tower case. It's gonna fit our motherboard, our graphics cards, and we have plenty of expansion availability on there when it comes to hard drives if we wanna add more spinning storage. To keep our CPU cool, we are using the NZXT Kraken X72. This is a 360 millimeter AIO water cooler, which is going to be easy to service because this is a rendering system. We're not doing custom loop or rigid tubes or anything like that because ease of maintenance and working on this system needs to be a priority if something goes down so we can easily swap it out. We care about lights and stuff around here. We like bling, if that's not obvious already. So we are using the NZXT Hue 2 lighting accessory kit. Uh, we might expand this to also using the underglow for the case. We'll see how that goes. And then storage. This is, this is the interesting part here because this is an en editing rig. You'll see we've actually got three different types of storage here. We are gonna be using a Patriot 400 and gig uh, 480 gigabyte NVMe SSD. So it's an M.2 SSD that will be plugged in directly to our motherboard in one of the M.2 slots. That's gonna house our operating system, Premiere, stuff like that, that we want to load quickly. We have a Kingston SSD now, one terabyte SSD drive. This is our scratch drive. We're gonna move all footage we're editing on onto this drive. And that's the only thing it's gonna be tasked with is allowing us to edit off of this drive so it doesn't have to share resources with any other drives. The only read write that's gonna be happening on here is with our project files. When we're done, we move them off and then the process continues. And then we have got the behemoth right here. This is our Seagate Iron Wolf 10 terabyte drive. This is gonna be our storage drive for all of our video project files when they're done. And then we move them from there to our NAS. So we have kind of a redundant backup on there. So now that all the parts have been discussed, let's go ahead and talk about the tools we're gonna to use for this build. Now to build a computer like this, you don't really need any sort of specialized tools. In fact, all you pretty much are gonna need is a screwdriver. And this is a multi-bit driver. So it's got flathead on one side, Phillip on the other, and then two different sizes for each, as well as a six millimeter and eight millimeter nut driver. So this is usually all you need to get the job done. But because I'm a little bit lazier, I like to use a power screwdriver. So we'll be using one of these today. Um, zip ties and a side, side cutters. 
and a magnetic bowl. This is kind of optional tools. It just helps you stay organized. We'll be zip tying wires and stuff for cable management, the side cutters to cut the zip ties. And then of course, we don't want to lose any of our screws. So we have this magnetic tray to put all of our screws in. So now that we've talked about the parts and we've talked about the uh, tools, let's go ahead and start building it and show you just how to put it together. So the first thing you're gonna do is prepare your case. Now there's no one method that's gonna work for every single case that's out there. So you're gonna probably have to check the manual for whichever case you chose. So we're gonna take off both, the, both side panels on this because we're gonna need to access obviously both sides of this case and get these out of the way for safekeeping because we have a tempered glass side panel we're gonna put this somewhere where I won't break it. Inside pretty much every single case manufacturer box is a box of accessories, which is gonna have all your screws, any mounting plates that you need for hard drives or whatever else. In this case, Be Quiet puts everything in this box, drive sleds, additional drive sleds, screws, zip ties, everything you need is here. So locate yours and set it aside. We'll use that in a minute. But now that we've got our case pretty much ready, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the motherboard. So before we install the motherboard into our case, there's two things I wanna do before that. We're gonna install our CPU into the socket because it's easiest to access right now while it is out of the case. And we're also gonna install our M.2 NVMe SSD onto the motherboard uh, because it's obviously easy to access. Now I'm gonna install it in the bottom portion right here because we're gonna have a graphics card in this top slot. So if we ever have to access this, instead of taking our graphics card out, we'll be able to access it right here much easier. Obviously, if you're gonna be using three NVMEs, then you would put one in all three spots. To install the CPU, push down the retention arm, move it out of the way, but keep your finger on it because it is under spring tension, so you don't want it to flip back on you. Remove the socket cover, and then uh, you'll notice on the CPU, you actually have two indentations on there, and those are gonna correlate with two indentations that are on the socket. So it can only be installed one way. An easy way to remember with Intel CPUs is the lettering is always going to go right side up. So smoothly drop it in there, give it a little wiggle to make sure it's seated all the way. Push down the retention cover, push it underneath the retention screw, and then you'll push the arm down under a lot of tension. It's gonna feel awkward, there's a lot of tension there. Move it back under the little lip, move the cover out of the way, and your CPU is now installed. Now the NVMe installation is pretty simple. Most of the motherboards are the same. You're gonna remove the cover screw. This will fold back out of the way. The MSI M.2 slots have uh, thermal pads on there so that you can get better thermal transfer of heat from your SSD because a colder drive performs better. So peel that cover off and out of the way. Remove this retention screw for your SSD. Keep it in a safe place. The SSD installation is very simple. It can only go one way. You'll notice this notch and it's gonna correlate with the notch that's on the motherboard. Put it in at a slight angle, push it down against the thermal pad and then reinstall your screw to hold the drive down. So remove the cover from the top piece and then reinstall it in the reverse order that you took it off. And now you have one installed NVMe SSD. Now before we install the motherboard, you need to prepare your case. Now the Be Quiet Silent Base 801 already has the standoffs installed for us for a standard ATX layout. But your motherboard may vary if you're using a different size motherboard or your case may not have those standoffs pre-installed. So reference your manual. Now because ours are ready to be installed, we're gonna go ahead and put our motherboard in the chassis. Now this motherboard already has an IO shield cover built into the back of it, so we don't have to install one in the case. If yours has a separate piece of metal, you would install that first and then drop your motherboard in. Now this case has a center standoff that doesn't have a screw thread in there, but it has a nipple which is gonna hold our motherboard in place. So be careful when you line up the motherboard, you don't wanna have to use any sort of force to get it in there and you don't want the standoff to be grounding anything on the back of the motherboard. So once everything's lined up and that all the screw holes line up with your standoffs, then you can put in your screws and tighten them down finger tight. So I'm gonna be relocating the 140 millimeter fans on the front of this case to the top because there are no top fans in this particular case, but I'm gonna be putting the 360 millimeter radiator on the front. So I'm just gonna take these fans off and mount them over here. The nice thing about the Be Quiet case is it has this sled that slides out so if you're installing an AIO or fans or whatever it may be, you don't have to try and fight with it. You can just slide this out 
mount everything to it, and then slide it back in. So depending on the cooler that you have, it's gonna be a different process for mounting. Air coolers are different than AIOs. AIOs are obviously very different than like custom water cooling loops, but the process is typically the same on when I do my installations. I like to mount the fans to the radiator first, and then mount the radiator where it's gonna go. So in this case, I'm gonna have the fan set as a pull, which means it's pulling air through the radiator into the chassis. And I'm gonna mount that to the chassis first and then the cooler to the CPU. Now to be able to do it right for your application, you obviously need to consult the manual with whatever cooler that you're going with. Now, if you're going with an AIO, you need to kind of check for some clearances here. So we tried to install this normally so that the uh, writing on the NZXT is horizontal. The problem is the tubes were interfering with our RAM right here, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's okay because we have plenty of slack in our tubes so we can just rotate the cooler in a 90 degree orientation because the bracket is perfectly square. So we can just rotate this so that's out of the way and then we are good to go. So now that we have our CPU installed, our motherboard installed in our chassis and our cooler in there and we've made sure we have no obstructions, we can go ahead and install our memory. So now you can see why I went with this black and orange kind of an aesthetic because it matches perfectly with our Silent Base 801. Now before you install the memory, you wanna make sure the tabs are flipped up and that you orient yourself with this notch in the module that correlates with the notch in the socket. So because we have four modules, it's pretty simple for us. We can just put one module in every single slot. But if you're not running uh, full modules in all of your slots, you wanna look at your manual to make sure that you're installing them in the proper order because you have a single channel and dual channel config or if you're running even an X-Series motherboard, then you can actually have quad channel as well. So consult with your manual to see which slots you need to use for your particular memory configuration. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is install our storage, our one terabyte SSD and our Iron Wolf 10 terabyte drive. Now, the Be Quiet case has this removable cage that you can install the drives in. Because we might add more storage to this later, I'm not gonna install both in this cage. I'm gonna let the SSD get installed in its portion on the back of the cage, or the back of the case right here rather, so that we can easily access that because then we have room here for two of these drives if we decide to expand it later. Now installing it is gonna be dependent on your case. So again, look at your case mounting options to determine what the appropriate process is. But the Silent Base 801 actually has these rubber grommets on here to keep our mechanical drive nice and quiet because uh, mechanical drives tend to make clicking sounds and having these rubber grommets are gonna isolate that so that we don't hear it. Now the nice thing about SSDs is because they're so small, you can fit quite a few of them into cases. Now case manufacturers have picked up on this and have started coming up with pretty unique options to allow you to mount more SSDs. And uh, because of their small thin form factor, you can fit them just about anywhere. So like I said, this one mounts on the back of the motherboard tray, which gives us nice easy access to it if we decide that we want to remove it, replace it, upgrade it, or whatever down the line. So as you can see, our SSD is now installed. So the nice thing about the NZXT Hue 2 controller is that it uses the exact same mounting mechanism or hole spacing as an SSD. So anywhere that you have an SSD mount, you can actually mount the control box, but it's also magnetic. So if you have a steel case, you could just install this on the back of your motherboard tray if you didn't have anywhere that you could screw this down and it would stay. But because we have the mounting option, we're gonna go ahead and mount this on our bracket that goes right behind the CPU. So next we're gonna do our power supply and get our cable management ready to go. I like to install the graphics card last. So if you're waiting to get to that part, that's kind of like the icing on the cake. But we're gonna get our graphics, but we're gonna get our power supply and our cables all run through here. And the Be Quiet case here has this bracket that comes off the back. You mount this to your power supply directly and then you can put in your power supply. Now there's gonna be a lot of debate on whether or not your fan should be facing down or your fan can face up. Uh, it's pretty much gonna be preference at this point, but these cases do have perforation and airflow vents on the bottom, so it can pull in fresh air from the bottom. But if you're sitting on thick carpet or really tall carpet, that could sort of choke off this particular vent right here. So it's really gonna be based on your situation. If it's on a desk or a hard surface or thin carpet, then you'd be fine pointing it straight down. In fact, that's the way most people prefer to install it. So this power supply is fully modular and I have these custom cables to use uh, with this power supply. Now, the cables that come with it are black, which look nice, but I like the way individually sleeved cables look. This is a black paracord and these are available for the Corsair power supplies. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna plug in all of the cords I know we're gonna use. We're gonna need our power cable for our PCI Express, which is our graphics card, our 24 pin for our motherboard, 
our 8-pin EPS for our CPU. And in fact, we have two 8-pin EPS on this motherboard, so I'm gonna plug in both of those. And then I'm gonna plug in my peripheral on here as well, so that way I can plug in power for our Hue 2, any lighting modules we might add, uh, our fan controller, as well as our storage. Now this is where you can start doing some of your cable management. You can run the cables that you know are gonna be going together uh, and zip tie them now before we put it into the chassis. So these are both my eight pin CPU power plugs. And I know these are gonna take the exact same route. So I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie these two cables together. So I'm not fighting with trying to pull them out of the stack later. Cause as you can see, there's quite a few wires that are going into this build and it just makes it easier for me to keep track of. I'm gonna do the same thing for the PCI Express as well as the SATA. All right, so next we're gonna take care of the front side connectors. Now in this case, we do have USB 2.0 and 3.0 header for the front. We will not be using the USB 2.0 though because we only have two USB 2.0 headers on this motherboard and we need to use those for NZXT uh, Hue 2 as well as our cooler. So we are going to go ahead and route these uh, and try and make them as neat as possible. Now we also have on here our front uh, reset power and our LEDs, and these are gonna connect to the bottom of our motherboard. In pretty much every single scenario, they're on the bottom of the motherboard. So just route these wherever it makes sense in your case. In our case, we're gonna route them kind of right along here like this. This is also our HD audio, which is front panel uh, audio jack connector, so headphone and microphone. I personally never use these, so I'm just gonna kind of roll that up and push it out of the way. Now, usually in the bottom right-hand corner of your motherboard is where you'll find your front panel connector header. Now, the pinouts on these are pretty much standard nowadays, where the top two on the right are gonna be your power switch, the top two on the left are gonna be your power LED with the positive terminal on the far left, the two below that are gonna be your hard drive LED, and the two to the right of that are gonna be your reset switch with the farthest right pin on the bottom being unused. Now verify that with your motherboard manual. Some motherboards decide to be a little bit different, but things have been pretty standardized over the last few years. Now for the front side USB 3.0, it's a little bit unique in this case. So these little covers right here are where additional hard drive sleds can go, like this one down here, although we're not gonna be using any of those. They do have these covers that pop off. The nice thing is we can actually adjust the depth of the cover if we want it to not be flat against the other side. So we can run cables through there. See how I just made this gap? So we're gonna be doing that here for the USB 3.0 and the SATA cables, and here for our 24 pin power going to our motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and route this guy through just like this, flip the case around and plug it in, and then I'm gonna pop that cover back on so that we have a nice clean look. So next up is everyone's favorite part of building a computer, whether you're experienced or not, and that is cable management. Now I'm not gonna take a lot of time right now to tell you how to cable manage. I did a whole video about that that you guys can go and check out right up here. We'll put a link in the description below. It's all about what I think about when I'm wire managing a computer. What I'm gonna tell you right now though, as a new, as a new builder, if you haven't done this, so a couple of things to look out for. One, you want to make sure that nothing is protruding past the side panel of the case, because that's only gonna mean you can't put your case back on. So you need things to be run as flat as possible. Some case, just like this one, actually the side panel comes out slightly to give you more depth. Not all cases are like this. You wanna check with yours. The other thing is specifically regarding SATA power. That's these thin little guys right here, the, the thin flat ones. Not the fat Molex like these guys right here, but this guy. This is what's gonna be powering like your hard drives, your SSD. Um, we have uh, even some external ones over here for like powering, where'd it go? Where are you? Somewhere, anyway, we've got additional ones that are gonna power like our, our fan controller here. The plastic that's used on these hard drives, the SSDs and hard drives is very brittle. And when you plug this in, as you can see, it sticks out a little bit. So you want to make sure that you're not pushing down or up on that. Make sure that does not happen because if it does, you will snap the plastic off that quicker than, I don't know, insert your own analogy here. A lot of power supplies actually have a 90 degree plug for SATA rather than a straight like this, uh, which means it doesn't stick out nearly as far. Now, if yours is like this, you can bend the wires quite a bit like that, kind of make your own 90. That way they're sort of stuck out of the way like that. So they're not getting, you know, sticking out too far and getting hit on things. Definitely be careful of that. As you can see, that sticks out really far and that will snap off the plastic. Same goes for your SATA plug, this guy right here. As you can see, I'm using a 90 degree on here so that we don't accidentally snap that off. As you can see, it goes just like that. 
So let's go ahead and wire manage this. Then we'll plug in our graphics card and we'll get things to start firing up. So now that all the wiring is in here, there's a lot crammed behind this case, but this, is, this isn't the business end. It's okay if this is a little bit messy, but you need to make sure nothing's binding or getting caught up or is gonna get pinched on your side panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook this guy on, make sure that we are good to go. And there we go. So everything is on. And if we flip it around, you can see all the time we spent managing our cables made everything look way cleaner on this side. Now before we install our MSI RTX 2080 Ti Trio, we need to prepare the back of the case right here. So we have to remove some of the expansion slot covers, that way we can actually get access to our display port and HDMI ports. So it's pretty simple, this uses two. If it's got two of these little screw holes and it's got two of these little brackets on here, you only have to remove two from the back of the case. And the easiest way to know which two is just go straight across from the slot that you're gonna put it in and then go take the one even with it and the one below it off. So in this case, because we're using the top slot, we can just take off the top two expansion slot covers. On the PCIe slot, just push the retention tab down. Yours might look a little different. It might have a little squeeze tab on the side. Just make sure it's open and ready to accept the graphics card. Line up these two tabs right here with the slot. So I always start there, line those two in, and once those are lined up, then you can push the card into the socket until it clicks. That little tab is now closed and our graphics card is pretty much installed. We've got to put our screws in here now and then plug in our power. It's done. Our custom 9900K build that we built all on our own. And theoretically, if you guys followed along, you built a computer too. 9900K sitting on top of our MSI MEG Z390 Godlike motherboard and our MSI RTX 2080 Ti gaming trio. But obviously we have to test it. We've got to get an operating system installed. We got to make sure it turns on and all of our drives and stuff are there. And to do that, MSI has hooked us up with a plethora of stuff to get the job done. So this panel right here is a 27 inch 144 Hertz 1080p gaming panel. That is the Optics MPG 27C. Our keyboard right here is the GK80. It's the Vigor GK80 keyboard, which has a detachable wrist rest that's made out of metal. Super, super heavy duty, as you can hear. That's not going anywhere. We've got an Immerse GH60 gaming headset and a GM80 uh, clutch mouse. So here we go. We need to see now if this thing is going to boot and uh, otherwise we'll have to do it all over again. And this little cable you got sitting right here, this is actually for our hue. Our hue lighting is attached to our glass panel. So we plug that in when we put the panel on and then everything should go from there. But we've just got a monitor just booted up. You can see we've got some RGB going on the bottom right there. All this lighting amongst all of these devices is actually controlled via MSI's Mystic Light. So you can actually uh, control our mystic RGB. So you can control all of that via their control panel. There is our BIOS and let's see if we've got our, uh, let's see if we actually got our hard drives and stuff showing on. So hardware monitor, actually let's go over here to our board explorer and that'll tell us what we've got. So here is our M.2 right there, our Patriot Hellfire 480 gig. You can see we've got our front side uh, USB 3.0 going. And if we look at SATA ports, it shows we've got our Kingston, right there, which is our SSD now one terabyte. And we've got on port six, our 10 terabyte Iron Wolf drive. And of course our 9900K is showing up and all of our RAM sticks are showing up. So that's a really nice feature of the MSI motherboards is the BIOS will show you a board explorer, which gives you the information of everything that is plugged into it. Okay, so we have to install an operating system on this now, and we're gonna obviously be installing Windows 10 and using Adobe Premiere for all, all of our editing purposes. And installing an operating system is a lot easier than you may think. Windows 10 now installs from a flash drive. Plug it into the motherboard. The motherboard will automatically detect that it's a boot device and take you through the installation process. So guys, once again, a huge thank you to MSI for sponsoring today's build guide and providing us these parts to bring you our coverage of how to build a 9900K system. You can learn more about what MSI has to offer by clicking the link in the description below. And as always, guys, we'll see you in the next one. But this guilt, this guild bide. I'm walking here. I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. All right, so these are the parts we're gonna use here on this computer. We're gonna put it together and be like, yo. You know, it's, you know what's hard for me? Words. I <laughs> got